we are now ready to start sewing the zippers into our pants. And we're gonna start with a fly front zipper. We're gonna take a look at this pant here. Now what's happening is this is center front where this notch is. And if we were to sew down here to this circle and down here, that would be our crotch curve. But we have this little extra piece here and that's called a fly extension. And that fly extension is what like basically forms the underlap of your fly front. So it's really important that we so have this. Let's get started. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is finish the right leg. So this is the right leg. And whenever we say right leg, we don't mean as we're looking at it, we mean as we're wearing it, right? So here would be the right leg on me. You wanna finish the fly extension on your serger or with the zigzag stitch from the top all the way down. So as I come around here, I always just make sure when I'm at my serger that I tuck this right out of the way and I stop here. Alternatively, you can do the other way. You can tuck this out of the way. You can start your surging right here so you can just line up your needle right here and then surge all the way down and just making sure that you're not trimming anything off, okay? So you're just gonna match everything up. And I'm gonna draw in our stitch line so that you can imagine what we're gonna be doing. It's a little bit easier. So I've got everything pinned together. And essentially what we're gonna be doing is stitching 5 8 from this circle marked down, this is gonna be a 5 8 stitch line. But we need to draw, we need to sew from the center front line all the way down to this line. So you could probably eyeball of that at your machine. I'm not that risky. I like to use a ruler and just draw that line for myself so I know exactly what I'm stitching. Okay, so you can just draw in with a piece of chalk. And what we're gonna do with the machine is we are going to do a long basting stitch from center front to that circle mark. And then we're gonna switch to a short stitch length for the rest of the crotch seam. And the reason for that is because this basting stitch is temporary. We're just doing it to kind of anchor these pieces together. We wanna to be able to take this apart later. So if you're using a short stitch length, it's a little bit more seam ripping for you. So long basting stitch, so let's go over to the machine and stitch this crotch curve. So I've got my machine with a long stitch length and I am gonna back stitch at the beginning just so it doesn't undo. Oops. And then I'm just basting all the way down. And we also have, in the case of Mitchell, we have a circle marking here, so you can just disregard that for a moment, but that's what that is. And then as I approach this circle, I'm going to change my stitch length back down to 2.5. I'm gonna take a stitch, I'm gonna back stitch just to anchor it, and then I'm gonna continue sewing. And now I'm gonna sew at 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, so we've gone and stitched that. You can see here, my stitching got a little wonky here, so I just went and smoothed that curve out. And now what we want to do is from the underside of this fly extension, we want to cut straight to that circle without clipping into the stitch line, okay? So I'm just trimming right to that. And now we want to finish. This would be the stage where we go and finish the seam. Here are my tips for serging that front crotch curve seam. If you're serging this and you go up to your serger right now, People often, again, this is an area where people are often um, accidentally cutting holes in their pants. So what I like to do is I like to fold that fly extension right out of the way, and I like to start the trim for the serger. So I know right where I need to go. So I'm gonna start trimming right there. So it's about a quarter of an inch that I'm removing. And I'm gonna lift my presser foot. And then it's really easy for me to serge. Like I'm already ready to go. If I didn't trim that, then I'm like trying to like get it at the right part to trim. So I just find it easy, like tell the serger where you want it to start right here. This is completely out of the way. We're not worried about accidentally cutting any fabric and now we can start serging. And that's about as much as you wanna trim off, about a quarter of an inch. You're gonna leave about three eighths. And if you don't have a serger, you would trim about that short and finish with a zigzag stitch. 
Okay, so we've got that seam surged, and now we're going to prepare the front to actually put the zipper in. So the first thing that you wanna do is sew that seam and press it towards the right leg. And the other thing that we wanna do, so we're pressing that to the right, and we also wanna press this fly front open. And if you want, you can kind of go and finish, just make sure this is nicely pressed on this side. So once again, we're pressing to the right leg. And again, when I'm sewing like a really curved seam like this, I'm using my ham and then I'm just using the little tip of the iron to get in there. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna place our zipper. For Sasha, the zipper would go, you know, we would have our 5-8 seam allowance and the zipper stop, we would want the zipper to end about there. But because Mitchell, the button goes here, we need to leave room here to put that button in. So that's why on the pattern we have it marked, there's a circle marking right here. That's where we want the zipper to stop so that we make sure we have enough room for the button. But if this was Jenny or if this was Sasha and you're putting the zipper front in, you would just draw in your 5-8 seam allowance and that's where you would want the zipper to start. Right now I have a seven inch zipper and for Mitchell, we want the, like I said, we want the zipper teeth to start below that mark. And then we want the bottom of the zipper stop, this metal piece right here, to end about at least a half of an inch. You want at least a half of an inch here, and that's because we're gonna come in top stitch. So if you have your zipper stop too low, when you come to do your top stitching, your needle is gonna hit that zipper stop. So you need to have room here so that when you come and do that top stitching, you're not gonna hit that stop. So the secret with a fly front zipper, what it is about a fly front zipper that is important to understand is that this is center front. This seam from here to here is center front. My zipper, if my zipper was inserted at center front right here, you would see it. We want to hide it. So the point of a fly front zipper is that we are insetting the zipper into the garment so that we can do it up and down and it's all hidden under this like pretty flap and it's just a nice clean look. So in order to do that, we have to align the zipper properly. So the first step with signing with, with once you kind of know where on the fly your zipper is going to start, you want to align the edge of the zipper tape with center, center front. Unless you for some weird reason have like a very narrow zipper, but basically you want at least a half of an inch between the zipper teeth right here and center front. So I'm just going to make sure that the top of my zipper teeth is under that circle marking. I'm going to align the edge of my tape with center front and I'm gonna pin it into place. And I'm pinning it into place on the right side of the zipper tape here because we're gonna end up stitching here. So I wanna put, a, I wanna put my pins here so they're out of the way. And I'm only pinning through the fly extension. I'm not pinning through the pant. And what we want to do now is stitch as close as we can along the line of the zipper here, just through the fly extension. We're going to be sewing the zipper to the left fly extension and only the fly extension. Okay, so we're at our machine. I just want everything to lie nice and flat. I'm actually looking at this now that it's lying flat and I can see, I want to just push that zipper over just slightly. And I've got my zipper foot on my machine and we're gonna sew as close as we can to the teeth in one straight line of stitching. Just to the end of the teeth and no further. If this was Jenny or Sasha, your pant would actually look something like this and you could sew all the way to the end. But for Mitchell, because of that facing and the, the room that we need to leave for the button, I'm just going to stop at that circle. Okay, so we're back at our station and I'm just gonna do that zipper back up again. You're gonna take the zipper, you're gonna press it along that line and you're going to fold it 
all the way over. And it's really important that you make sure everything is pulled tightly and laying flat. And now you're going to pin this tape to the right fly extension, ensuring that everything is as flat as possible so that you have that zipper when we sew it to this fly extension, it's sewn in a straight line and there's no buckling or weird areas. So just take your time, push the, the zipper over and start pinning. Okay, so this is pinned in place. I should now be able to kind of flip this back and forth. So I'm gonna go like this and we're gonna go back to our machine and once again use our zipper foot to sew as so close as we can along that line of the zipper. And for this side of the zipper tape for Mitchell, you can sew along the entire length. So I can start right at the top. I'm gonna just try to get as close as I can here. I wanna get this pin out of the way. And then once I'm past that pull, I can get close again. And then we're gonna sew in a straight line all the way down. And then we're gonna sew a second row of stitching just along this bit of tape so that it's not loose and flipping around. So our zipper's now sewn. Honestly, that's one of the hardest parts of this is just kind of understanding how all of this works. So once again, basically what we used is those fly extensions allow us to set the zipper farther, far enough in so that here's that center front, here's where the zipper is. When this all gets sewn and top stitched, you're gonna have the zipper all the way and nobody's gonna see it. Marvelous. So now we're gonna top stitch the fly. So you're gonna turn your pants right side up and you're going to make sure that that fly construction is laying smooth. The zipper, like I can feel it with my finger the pulls right about here I'm gonna lie everything nice and flat I can feel the underside of the fly extension I'm gonna like if I turn it around I can see where this fly extension is I'm gonna use a pin to kind of mark the bottom curve of that just so we can I can help you visualize up here so this is where the bottom of that fly extension is so it's kind of let me lay it flat again I can feel it with my finger. And what we wanna do is use this guide to top stitch through the front layer of the pant and also through this. And that's what gives this strength and stability. That's what makes fly fronts so amazing. So you wanna make sure that you're catching this fly extension with your top stitching. So I'm gonna just make sure that the bottom of this, I have more than enough room to catch that fly extension. I'm not gonna hit the stop. I'm lining up with center front and now I'm just gonna use a chalk tool and I'm gonna trace. Kind of having a hard time tracing against that so I'm just gonna use a ruler here. Give me a nice firm line. And then I wanna come around here, okay? So this is the guide we're now going to follow. So it's really important, you have to draw this. It's much easier to do this if you draw it. Okay, so here we are at our machine. I've just switched back to a regular uh, presser foot and I'm gonna give you my tips for getting a really beautiful top stitched fly. So you can kind of start as close to the top as you want. Just back stitching at the beginning and I'm just gonna sew nice and smooth in a straight line. I'm catching the fly extension here with my stitching. And I'm using my hands to flatten the fabric so it's not like going like this, it's lying nice and smooth, the fly extension's flat, I can feel everything's nice and flat. And now we're approaching this curve and this is top stitching on a very visible surface of fabric. So what I want you to do is just slow down and just very gently turn your work as you're stitching. With every stitch, you're just gently shifting the fabric. You're keeping your hands flat to keep the fabric flat. And you're just gently turning the work with every stitch.
and then you're kind of turning your work a little bit more as the car the curve becomes more acute and then as I approach center front I'm just going to continue sewing right past that seam and then I'm going to back stitch twice so let's see how I did there's one little area that's like not quite perfect I we're not go after perfect but I'm basically going to sew a little bar tack right there in between those two marks. And that's going to give me the stability that I need. It's going to give me the strength of that bar tack. And it's going to hide that little bit of wonky stitching. Um, here's Mitchell. Mitchell's kind of extra long because inside Mitchell, this fly extension is quite a bit longer. And that's to catch that button on the inside. And it's quite, the fly extension for Mitchell is quite wide. And Mitchell, or a sash that's a little bit narrower. And then the construction is a little bit different. So here we have the Sasha fly extension. I've sewn them together. One side is interfaced. You'll also notice on Sasha that, oh, you can't see it now, but the fly shields, uh, the fly extensions on Sasha should also have been interfaced because it's a stretch woven. That's what Sasha's designed for. If you're doing a lot of top stitching on a stretch woven and you're not stabilizing it, you're gonna get ripples. So it was important that those areas were stabilized, but because Mitchell is sewn on a stable non-stretch, you do not need to interface those fly extensions. So for the same reason, the Sasha fly shield here, one side's interfaced, Mitchell doesn't need to be interfaced because it's a uh, non-stretch. So with both of these, we're going to trim them down so with Mitchell, the fly extension, you're going to sew at 5 eighths all the way around the top, long edge and bottom edge. But you want to leave this side free because we have to turn it inside out. And then using my pinking shears, I'm just going to trim one side smaller than the other so I don't have a big beefy seam. And because this applique scissor has this wide bill, I'm basically able to really easily trim that seam and the applique protects the layer underneath so I'm not accidentally trimming that by mistake. And then here, I'm just going to clip really close to the edge so that I'm able to turn this whole thing inside out. Okay, so we're gonna turn this inside out, give it a press. For Sasha, we'll do the same thing. <coughs> I'm actually just going to braid very, one of these sides, doesn't really matter which one. And then I'm gonna clip in here because it's a curve. So we want it to be able to lie flat on the inside. And so I'm just doing this every half inch or so along that curved area. And I may wanna go and grade these seams down a little bit. So both of these now get turned to the inside. Give them a good press. And the point of this fly shield is it protects, it's the layer in between your skin and the zipper. So you don't have to have a fly shield, but you would maybe be like getting things caught in your zipper and it wouldn't be very comfortable. So this is just meant to protect your body from your zipper. And then once you've got them pressed, you're going to go around the perimeter and top stitch. So I've already done that for the Mitchell fly shield. I've just gone and top stitched one eighth of an inch away all the way around. We would do the same thing for Sasha all the way around. And now we're ready to install this. All right. So for Mitchell, it's now time to install the fly shield. So like I said, we just covered how to sew this. What I want you to do is just go take a piece of chalk and a ruler and mark your 5 8 seam allowance, 5 8 away from the edge of the waist seam. And then you're going to align your fly shield with that 5 8 mark, okay, along the left fly extension. And you're going to align the raw edge with the edge of the fly extension. So now we're going to go to the machine and we're going to sew along here at about 5 8 Okay, so I'm at my machine and I'm gonna sew with the fly shield down so that I can see what I'm doing. And also it's a little bit easier to, to stitch because I can kind of fold the leg out of the way. 
and I'm just gonna sew at about five eighths. Okay, so the fly shield's been sewn, and what I could do now is I could, I need to finish the seam. So I could do it with a serger, sure, but it's kind of fun to have fun with notions and making your pants look really beautiful on the inside. So the other option is that I could take a piece of double fold bias tape like this, and I could wrap the raw edge with the double fold bias tape all the way along. It's beautiful, you're not, it's another line you don't have to serge, and then it's a fun way to coordinate with your lining. So that's another idea. So this is Sasha, and I just wanna show you how it's a little bit different. So with Sasha, we don't need to worry about having a seam allowance up here. We can have this go as high or low as we want. When we're trying to figure out where the fly shield goes, the most important thing is that it's, the fly shield is meant to kind of also conceal all the ugliness of this construction. So I wanna make sure that this is just maybe below where we clipped into the seam allowance. And then I want this edge to cover all of this. And so if for some reason, depending on how you constructed it or how far you set your zipper in, you might find that if you're lining it up with the edge of the fly extension here, the raw edges, that you still see this, in which case just shift this over, shift, uh, trim the fly extension as you need to, and then you can finish this whole thing together. But I'm just, actually it's, it, I don't really need to trim this side, it's looking good. So I'm just going to align the bottom of this so it covers that. I'm gonna line up my raw edges, and it looks like my fly shield's a little bit longer here for some reason, not sure why but it's not a big deal, I can trim it later. So I'm gonna to go to the machine and I'm gonna stitch this at about quarter inch, three eighths of an inch. Okay, so here we go. Sasha's now been sewn. You can go and finish this raw edge with a bit of bias or a serge sit, stitch. And just to show you what this looks like from the front side, you can see my fly shield's just a little bit taller here, so I'm gonna probably trim that down at a later step. But now in both cases, with Sasha and Mitchell, we're, we're now at a point where we're gonna do the last detail for the fly front, which is sewing the bar tack. So here I am, I'm about to do my bar tack, so I'm just gonna get my needle kind of centered on the bit of stitching that I'm gonna cover with a bar tack. And here we go. So there's one bar tack. And I also wanna add one here, because again, super, super high stress. There. Once I remove this basting stitch, this is a really, really stressed joint, so we wanna help it survive with a bar tack. And there we go, two beautiful bar tacks. Okay, so we've got those bar tacks sewn. And now it's time to remove the basting stitches. So remember when we sewed this crotch seam, we sewed this with a basting stitch and this is why, but look at this. So this is now free and look at this gorgeous zipper and look at how inset it is. It's about three quarters of an inch away from center front. So when you're wearing these pants, nobody's gonna see your zipper, which is another reason not to stress too much about the color of your zipper because you're not gonna see it. To finish the fly front on Mitchell, the very last thing that we need to do is to anchor all of this because it's all loose right now. And so what we wanna do is just fold the pant flat like this and pin the pant in place along the fly shield. And what I'm gonna do at the machine is just stitch a line all the way down next to the zipper, as far as I can basically, down towards the zipper, and that's gonna anchor all of these pieces together. Okay, so here I am at my machine. I've got my zipper foot down, and I wanna sew about an eighth of an inch along the seam to kind of anchor everything. But I wanna kind of hide the raw edge of the zipper, so I'm just gonna kinda wedge it in and use my finger as I'm sewing everything together to keep that tucked into the seam.
And then the goal is just to sew as far down the zipper as I possibly can. And then as far as I can, and then just backstitch. And you don't need to worry if this is beautiful because nobody's gonna see it. So this is the same process for Sasha or Mitchell. And that wraps up a fly front zipper. And I hope it was easy for you. I hope it wasn't too intimidating. So if this is a skill that you wanna kind of try to lock into your brain, I would suggest just doing a couple scraps and a couple practice runs and just doing it over and over again until you get a good handle on it. Mm -hmm.